Lance is one of the strongest Dragon Tamers in the Pokemon franchise and leader of the Elite Four in the Kanto region. But if he was the main character in Pokemon Violet, could he become the very best in Paldia? To find out, I'll be playing as Champion Lance using the Pokemon that he has used. But to make things more fun, I added some extra rules to turn up the heat. With that in mind and the complete nude that I am, could we actually beat this challenge? With that said, let's get gaming. We spawn in as Lance, but already there's a problem. We haven't got a cape. Lance means detective business with his attire, but seeing as we're stuck with our uniform, I already know I'm going to go through pain. We get to choose our starter, but hold up. Where's my blue noodle? Toss them in the trash. <laughs> Ow, all right, fine. I guess you'll do for five minutes. As a natural fact, having chosen the grass cat, this makes it even harder as we progress on. But for now, Nimona wasn't too much of an issue. Oh, wow, you're good. It's funny you should say that. I've been a champion over 25 years now. But that's when the cool champion has a slight hiccup as we bump into a funny looking lizard and follow it into the cave. Wait, Lance has dragons up his roster, but he's scared of little pups? <laughs> Pathetic. The lizard bike thankfully saves us, and as we venture onward, we meet this boy who is supposed to be the professor's son, but to be honest, takes up after someone else with the attitude. He forces us to battle, but I let the squirrel play with the cat and send it away. This is when we have access to the Poke Portal, where thankfully one subscriber helped out and gave us a spare Charmander named Godzilla. This will be our starter for the run. Shortly after, we bump into Nimona, and this is where things go downhill from here. But Lance is a legend, just like the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a free-to-play turn-based RPG, meaning you can play your own way on mobile or on PC with over 650 champions that you can collect and use in a variety of different game modes. My favorite couple has to be Karato and Yumeko for their incredible passive and... Who doesn't love a good-looking, powerful swordsman? Other heroes that I like is this reference to Romeo and Juliet, Juliana and Romero from the Sacred Order. And if you're not interested in stats, but if you like champions that look cool, then I've got to hand it over to the Blazing Demons, Saisha and Cardial. And right now, there's all kinds of things to do, such as the new love quests where you can win new champions and even Amazon vouchers worth a thousand dollars just by playing Raid. All you need to do to get involved is to download Raid, copy your in-game player ID onto this address on screen. On top of that, any returning player can use the special promo code STVALENTINE23 to get a small gift. Raid has so much to enjoy and with added extra content including events, champions and more, now is the best time to join in on the fun. Use my link or scan this QR code to get insane bonuses, including a free champion, Kellen the Strike, as well as some extra loot for your adventures. Once you're in game and crushing foes, come and find me with my username, it's Ryan Hardy. And if you're quick enough, you can join my clan. And don't forget to claim exclusive rewards if you're an Amazon Prime user. Luckily though, Nimona ain't that bad, so we press on to meet Zagosa. This is a trainer's safe haven. Bakeries for sandwiches, chancy supply for medical supplements, but unfortunately for Lance, nowhere sells capes. You must join Team Star. Ah, so your Team Star I've been hearing so much about. And well, as much as Lance infiltrates and defeats Team Rocket, Team Star blasts away without any issue. Nimona gives us the Terror Orb to test out, but hold your horses because I won't be using it for this run. The next grunt was taken out with ease, and we saved the girl with this adorable Eevee bag. The days quickly passed by in the academy, and we're now on independent study. But what champion has time for that? We take on three different quests, Victory Road, Path of Legends, and Starfall Street. But being on a level cap, we've got to do it in a certain order. We set out west from the city and swiftly arrive in Cortondo, home of the bug-type gym. This one I have confidence, even though I have my one fire lizard. Although maybe my footwork can be slightly better. Once we finally pass Olive Roll, it was time to take on Katie. She starts with Nimble and after getting hit by Double Kick, two embers take down the bug. And the same follows with Tarantula. It uses Assurance, but again, we burn the spider. This leaves only her Teddy Ursa. It terrestrializes to bug types 
and it is quite tanky, but after a miss and furry swipes and two embers, it fires up a huge fury crotter. We're barely hanging on, but thankfully one more flame takes it down. With this, we already got our first gym badge. If you've seen my animal team rules, I'll also be applying the one encounter per gym rule as well. With that in mind, we can go and catch not only his second dragon, but my personal favorite dragon, Gibble. I had the perfect nickname for it being the first possible encounter. Our next battle was going to become much easier. On top of that, Godzilla gets a growth spurt and evolves to Charmeleon. We're pretty much ready to take on this goofy little thing, Cloth. It's pure rock type, so I start with Baby Shark and spam a few sand tombs. This gets it below half, which activates Anger Shell, raising all offensive stats. One big vice grip takes Arbor Shark down, so out comes Godzilla and stops it with a singular Dragon Breath. Although, it flees to its hideaway. Cannonball! <laughs> Arvin catches up for the second phase, and with the help of Shelda, we take it down with little trouble. Upon discovering the first Herba Mystica, our motorbike lizard, well, steals my sandwich. But at least it's able to go much quicker now. In no time at all, we arrive at the next gym, Artisan. And again, this fight shouldn't be too much trouble with my fiery lizard. Help me find my sunflower playing hide and seek. Oh, you have come to the right person, Detective Lance, at your service. 12 seconds later. Hello. You are one blind plant pot. And what is probably the easiest gym challenge out the way, we're clear to take on our next gym, Brassius. And again, grass is weak to fire. But this one could be a tough one with Baby Shark and, well, weak moves. Although my first attempt did not go to plan. I tried hitting hard with Baby Shark, but I had to switch to Godzilla. Petalil is annoying as it puts me to sleep, making our first two moves useless. We do eventually wake up and hit hard with Ember, but we've taken a bit of damage already. Smoliv was easy with two Embers, but his Ace Pseudo Wudo is dangerous, even though it has the Grass type in. It can hit hard with Rock Throw, meaning taking down Godzilla, and Trailblaze hits hard, eventually taking Baby Shark out as well, thus giving us our first loss. But on the next attempt, I start with Godzilla. We do get put to sleep, but we manage to take down Petalil with two Embers. Smoliv was given the same treatment as before, so all that's left is what he calls truly Wudo. One big rock throw puts us on the brink of death, so one big critical blaze ember was enough to take it down the tree. If it wasn't for the critical hit, we would have lost. But with two badges down, we're off to our next stop. Next, we make our way back to the west and take on the next titan. And I think this one I'm going to struggle with. Even though it's a dark flying type, it tries to kill me throwing rocks down the mountain. Bombardier uses a few rock throws on Baby Shark, but we couldn't connect 30% Paralysis on all three turns, and even the Blaze Ember was nowhere near enough. I tried this over and over again, until 7 hours of struggling later, both of my Pokemon died to a singular poke. <laughs> I then realized I'm still rocking two Pokemon, and our third one was literally further down the hill. So we take the opposite direction and up north to find our third member of our squad, Swablu. I called her Era, meaning snow in Welsh. Being a normal flying type, it's still going to be weak to rock throw, but disarming voice should help. I also got Baby Shark to learn Dragon Claw, but this turn it's raining, so Godzilla can only use one Dragon Breath. No paralysis, and we go down. Ah, oh, great, I forgot to heal. Baby Shark hits a lot harder than Dragon Claw, thankfully, but he takes us down with a critical pluck. We were so close! And we got even closer the next time. Really? And eventually, this run happened. Godzilla managed to paralyze the bird, so we can hit a second Dragon Breath before going down to pluck. We hit a couple of disarming voices thanks to it being fully paralyzed, but it does eventually knock us out with wing attack. So this leaves my baby shark to hit hard with a single dragon claw. We couldn't heal when Arvin shows up, so we do go down in the second phase, but Arvin's knackly avenges baby shark, meaning we're finally victorious. You stupid bird! Don't you think I deserve it, mate? Thank God that was over, but we had another problem, and that was Giacomo. Even though we're the best detective of Kanto, and the fact the guards were easy, 
Giacomo wasn't. Well, his car at least. We can easily take down Pornar to a singular ember, but after that, he's able to simply sweep. So I went on an adventure for two moves, and I went all the way down to the east side to pick up acrobatics. It deals double damage if you're not holding an item, so this is perfect for era. And Godzilla learns one major stab, flamethrower. Godzilla hits hard against Pornart as per usual, but we reduce its accuracy. It still knocks us out though, unfortunately, so Baby Shark comes out and reduces its speed with Bulldoze. We're barely hanging on after a swift, but it's still outspeeds, so a second one takes us down. This leaves a simple 1v1, but even a stab acrobatics doesn't hit hard enough, giving us yet again another fat L. All I can do is try again. Once again, we take down Pornard out with no issue. And when his car lowers our defense, we lower his accuracy before switching to era. And repeat with Baby Shark so he keeps lowering our defense. Once Godzilla is back out, I decide to attack when it misses Wicked Talk. We take a good chunk of health after eating a Wicked Talk, but it continues to miss afterwards, meaning we can hit hard with a Blaze Flamethrower. One Snarl does eventually connect and finish Godzilla, but the rest of the team ship away until the car blows up. With that said, the first Team Star member is dumb. It all started when, hold on there, sunshine. You've wasted enough of my time. Next, we head onwards back to the east side of Paldea to take on the next gym in La Vincia. This one I have faith with my baby shark, but Era is vulnerable, and Iono has a team of four. So this won't be fu- Hey lads, I want to see how strong you've got. Really? You have to interrupt? That's just rude. Regardless, we take on our rival, and thankfully she's quite easy to deal with. Her rock gruff going down to a single of bulldoze, and the same treatment is given to poor me, leaving her quacks well. We chip with Dragon Claw before going down after a second water pulse. I send Aero out to hit hard with- Please don't hit yourself. You stupid bird! Godzilla has no chance and falls instantly, giving us another loss. I've lost count of how many times I've lost in this run now. Despite this, we get to move onwards to the gym challenge. Whereabouts is Mr. Walks about? The goal of this is to put on a good live stream. And as long as she pays me in bits, then I'm happy. We find, well, our director out three times and take down the gym challenges to help feed her some clicks. We are eventually allowed to collaborate with the biggest streamer, and after teaching Baby Shark Rock Slive and evolving to Gabite just in time, we're ready to challenge the gym. How do you feel then, matey? <laughs> like I can't lose. She starts with Watchroll, so a quick Rock Slide from Baby Shark gives us a swift and early lead. Luxio is next and instantly intimidates, so I switch to Era to eat the bite. Then get a free switch back to Baby Shark because we're immune against Spark. Bulldoze is just shy of taking the big cat out, but we get to take it down with an easy Dragon Claw. Bellimol gets the same Bulldoze treatment, taking it down in two, leaving only her Miss Magius left. And this thing is scary because without Smackdown, this ghost has no weakness once to rustalize. He confuses our dragon with Confuse Way, and well knowing my luck, hits himself. The same thing happens to Godzilla and Ira too. I'm seriously getting unlucky here. I came back after cleaning the mud off the ground, and the beginning of the next attempt was exactly the same. But once Miss Magius terrestrializes once again, we battle the confusion, connect a critical Dragon Claw before going down once again to a Hex. And Godzilla also fights through confusion to finish with a single flamethrower. That was much better, but I'm worried further down the line, we're not going to be able to take down the most powerful trainers in the region. I don't even think we stand a chance against our next battle, Mela. Mela is the team star queen of fire types, so one easy solution to get around this as well as ground is water. Lance didn't just have a Gyarados in his roster, but he also had a shiny in the anime. But surely I'm not stupid enough to hunt on full odds for a silly little fish, right? One minute later. Oh my god, there's no way. First encounter, first encounter. <laughs> but there's a problem. Lads had a male shiny as it had red whiskers. With this being female, this was no good. So we're back to shiny hunting. But not even an hour later, I caught another one and evolved it to our red Gyarados. 
I called it the legendary fish. Now that we have our shiny fish, we're clear to take on Mela and her fire types. But before that, I ran into this. There is no way shiny female a chunk. But there's a problem. I can't obviously use it, but instead of killing it, I catch it, called it Peppa Pig, before trading her way to someone on my Discord server. Hey, aren't you that guy who hyperbeamed a grunt? Yep, Wataru. Lance Wataru. <sighs> oh no. She starts with a Torkoal who was physically bulky, so I go for Godzilla and attempt to paralyze with Dragon Breath. Once its flame wheel gets us low, one big blaze flamethrower takes it down. So we're left with her Starmobile, who instantly takes us down. I then send out our Fish, who cuts the Starmobile's attack. Even though it uses Screech on us, I hit a waterfall before switching to Baby Shark. We eat the Blazing Torque and continue to chip and switch back to Fish. With the rain up, even though we get burnt, we push on and hit hard with a couple more waterfalls until the car is no more. That went a lot easier than I thought it would. Also, Sorry, darling, but I gotta do it. Fish hyperbeam. <laughs> ah, yes, Lavincia, one of the biggest cities in the region, and still no Cape Store. Next, we head into the mines where not only we are set to deal with the Steel Titan, but also I battled with the Fish Imposter. And I found yet another shiny Pokemon. What is my shiny look today? Again, I trade it away to someone in the Discord server, but we're on a mission to play Whack-A-Mole with a big worm. Although this worm seems strong and is immune to our baby shark's ground types, thanks to its ability, it is super weak to special fire type moves. So Godzilla was able to give it a beating with a couple of flamethrowers. I'm sorry I'm late. Honestly, I don't know why you bothered. With all of worm defeated and getting told off by a big sick dog, this dragon thinks it's okay to have yet another sandwich. You're not even a dragon and you can have petrol, not my lunch. Next, we arrive in Cascarafa to tackle the water gym. But this geezer is scared of Elite Four members and dragons, so he makes a dart. The problem is, he leaves his money behind. So what does a good citizen and responsible trainer does with his money? Why, I spent it on capes and attire, of course. Although I can't say I'm not surprised when I cannot find any cape stores in the markets. So we decided to help out the monobrow man instead, auctioning for hoeing seaweed. Other than his water gym kicking Godzilla out of my roster, this should be a breeze for my team. I start with Feech against the loser, Hitting hard with a big crunch. We tank the slash before knocking it out with a second crunch. Next was Wugtrio, who even though reduces Fischia's speed stat and flinching, we take it down with another crunch. He terrestrializes his crab abominable, and this thing could easily take down my dragon types. We tank a couple of slams until our crunches are too much for the ice crab to withstand, which quite easily wins us our fourth badge. With a rough start into the run, we were starting to find our strength. Before we reach our next stop, we can catch our next dragon. Here in the large caves of the West Province, we catch our Bagon and named it Jet. It may not fly like my dragon bike, but just you wait. On top of that, it instantly evolved to Shellgon and gets a huge defense buff. And with that said, we're ready to take on the next team star boss, Atticus. This one I needed to rely on my baby shark and its new move, Earthquake. Being face to face with the creator of Team Star's attire, maybe I might let him go if he made me a very big cape. But you can probably guess how that went. A plague on your house, you villainous wretch! Although I make him eat his own words when our fish heats hard with singular Aquatel against Scum Tank, as well as Muck, giving us a very early lead. His small rever room is next and surprisingly outspeeds, but with it hanging on just one HP, I decided to switch and my plan goes to waste when it flinches Jet taking him out. So I send Fish back out to cut the attack and take it down with a singular crunch. This leaves only his Starmobile, but we can really hit hard with two Aqua Tails getting it down by two thirds. Once we fall, it's all up to Baby Shark to attack with a simple Earthquake. That was a lot easier than I thought, but the fights ahead were only going to get even tougher. Our next destination was in Madali for the next gym, and upon arriving, the gym challenge is all about food. This is good because since my BMW bike keeps stealing my food, 
I'm hungry. All we need to do is find a secret recipe to order. Hmm, this sounds very Kanto style. Larry, you got a gym battle. Oh, come on, really? Thankfully, Larry is quite easy to deal with. A single flamethrower taking down Kamala. We hit another flamethrower on the Dunsparce, but we also get the burn, which really helps us out. Glare does paralyze us, so I make the switch to Baby Shark and eat the drill run. He glares at us yet again, but the lingering burn takes it down. This leaves his big bird and cuts our attack. And Facade instantly KOs my shark. So it's time I send out Fish to cut the attack and then switch back to Godzilla. Meaning once we fall, we intimidate again and we receive the all clear to take it down with a couple of aqua tails. We really had to think there, but we still get the win. Oh Godzilla, you've had a big makeover over the years. Get in line, La Primeria. I found Lance first. No, I've been following him since Kanto. I love it when women fight over me. Luckily, our pal day arrival wasn't too much trouble, and we managed to scrape a win, and Ira evolves to Altaria. Our next stop was up in the mountains, and with it being the ghost-type gym leader, I had a plan. But I had to twist the rules slightly. Because I'm on Violet, Dreepy is the version exclusive, whereas Scarlet's exclusive is Dino and Lance used Dino in the anime, so we caught a Dreepy to trade. But no one was up for trading the version exclusive, so we'll just have to press on for now and stick it in the box. The difference between the other battles is that Rhyme specializes in double battles, so I send out Fish and Godzilla first. Together they take out Bennett quickly, but here's the twist. When you take down a Pokemon, you get a stat boost, so I use that to my advantage and hit hard. We bust Mimikyu's disguise and a singular crunch from Fish takes out Houndstone. When Toxtricity terastalizes, we take down Mimikyu quickly before Discharge hurts Godzilla and knocks out Fish. So Baby Shark comes out and being immune to electric types may take down our Fire Lizard, but one simple Dragon Claw gives us the rather easy win. Ah oh, great, now we're gonna go back down the mountain. Next, we're back in the desert to tackle the next Titan Pokemon. However, this one is different to the others being one from Area Zero, known as Iron Treads. But thankfully being weak to fire type moves and Godzilla now being a flying type, we can take it down with a couple of flamethrowers without too much trouble. We finally have a good momentum going with my team. We had a few rough patches, but we're finally pushing through. And well, for this next gym, it's pretty straightforward as well. Well, other than the lovely lost frames with this gym challenge, regardless, we power through with our dragons and manage to take on Tulip. You'd make a great makeup artist. Touch my face and you'll see what you get in return. Fish goes against Frigiraf, which two crunches gives us an early lead. I then dragon dance when Gardevoir is put in the field and then start to hit with Aqua Tail, which Oko's the fairy. Esparthro is next, so an easy crunch was easy to take it out. This leaves only her Flaugras and Terrastalizes, but one easy critical hit Aqua Tail was enough to finish Tulip's team and receive our 7th badge. Mister, my Elite 4 team are so good! Just you wait until you're against mine. Although this is when the fun stops here, because we're now set on course for Grusha and his Ice types, but two of my Pokemon are quadruple weak to ice types, so I really had to be careful with who I choose to put out into the field. But while we're here, by eating some spicy potatoes, we're able to go on a hunt for our ace. Well, not quite, but it's this little dude. Being near water, I decide to name it the first original name I've come up with on this channel. Tidal Wing, and evolving to Dragonair before mentally preparing for the pain and suffering I need to endure. On the plus side, the skiing gym challenge is fun. If only I was using real skis. Grusha starts with Frostmoth, which thankfully for us is quadruple weak to Rock, so Baby Shark was able to get a swift lead after Rock Slide. We also do decent damage on Bear Tick, but one Icicle Crush instantly pushes us back. I send out Tidal Wing next, who couldn't hit hard at all, and shares the same fate. This isn't looking good, but Fish luckily takes the bear out with Aqua Tail. Next is the Titan, and although bulky, we tank the Ice Spinner and knock the Ice Whale out. This leaves none other than his Altaria, and annoyingly avoids the Aqua Tail, but also confuses us after connecting Hurricane. 
Oh my god, why are you like this? This left a simple 1v1, but thankfully Flamethrower hits hard and we tank a Hurricane, meaning the second Flamethrower takes it down. It's all over. We've taken out the toughest trainer against dragon types. Uh, some team star fairies are up to no good. Fairies, excuse me? Well, this one I'm also not confident with, because dragon type moves are useless against fairy types, so I need to find a different way to hit hard. I resorted to teaching our baby shark Iron Head, so we can actually counter fairy types. In addition, he evolved to the most menacing guard chomp that he could possibly be, and our jet evolved to Salamence to put his name to pride. But if I'm being honest, our first attempt went so badly, I feel embarrassed talking about it. But I had a plan. By stalling and starting with Jet for now Intimidation, we can switch to Fish to cut the attack again, but also eat the play rough. We send Jet back on one last time and I hit hard with Fly, taking it out in two. But next was Wigglytuff, who charms us once we hit the Fly. So we switch back to Fish to reset. Can you see our strat here? We're clear to take it down with a waterfall. Cute Charm kicks in so I can switch again when Dashburn is sent out. We ruin his impressive attack stat and just survive a play rough. So we switch to Fish and start setting up Dragon Dance before two waterfalls take down the dog. This leaves only his car and we have a full team standing. However, I switch the Jet to sacrifice for double intimidation and for once avoid confusion damage. So we hit a big waterfall before going down to Magical Talk. I then send out Godzilla and hit hard with a few flamethrowers until the card cannot take any more. I was actually impressed with what I can do with Dragon's biggest downfall. Next we head down from the mountain to Castle Royal Lake to find our final titan and this one being a false dragon titan, I knew I would disapprove of it. Turns out it's a big whale but a few crunches later causes Dodonzo to flee from battle into its hideout. Arvin once again turns up late, but by this point, our shiny fish has bested the false dragon regardless. Oh, so Nemo's the real titan. Luckily, our monstrous fish was able to best the fish titan. And by God, you do not look proud of me. We get a wholesome moment when Arvin and his best bud, and well, my bike, is still wanting to pinch my lunch when I just gave him new oil. Our last major challenge as detective is to take on Eerie. She's the toughest out of all of Team Star squad bosses, but we have the biggest advantage. With Tidal Wing evolving to Dragonite, we now have five team members who have the advantage. She started with Toxic Croak, and Godzilla is out first to hit a super effective Air Slash, and we just fell short, so we get poison from Poison Jab. But on the next turn, we eat a Sucker Punch before taking it out with Dragon Breath. But Simeon is next, and we're looking really low, and once again, Air Slash falls short, so we eventually fall. Next was Tidal Wing, who can knock it out with a simple Fire Punch. Her Annihilate is dangerous, however, knowing Ice Punch and takes us out. I retaliate with Fish, cut the attack, and set with Dragon Dance to raise our attack and speed. So on the next turn, we outspeed and take it down with an easy Waterfall. Lucario is next, who falls easy to another waterfall, so all that remains is her star car. We do major damage with waterfall, but any physical attack that connects activates stamina, so we do less and less damage. Thankfully, we eat combat torques and let it set with shift gear, so we get the clear to take it down with no major problem. The team star boss was me all along! Ah! Tidal Wing! Hyper be my phone! We'll come back to the team star quest line a little later on. But for now, we still have to beat the Elite Four and reclaim our title as champion. But since when do we have to do a quiz? Eventually, we get to push onwards to the battle assessment. Rika was the queen of ground types and starts with Wish Cash. So I start with Baby Shark and set a sword stance. But it knows Blizzard and freezes my dragon. So already I'm in a bad spot when it takes us out. With only one Pokemon who is okay against Wish Cash at least, I send out Fish and spam crunches until the whale cannot take any more. Next was Donphan and we just cannot connect a single move so I make the switch to Jet, mainly to cut the attack. We chip away with Dragon Claw but it hits three stone edges in a row, taking us out. Fish comes back out and I can finally take it down, avoiding Dugtrio's Rock Slide so that was a free knockout and Camerupt who is quad reek to water moves so all that remains is her quad Zaya. 
But we go down when I found out it has water absorbability. So Godzilla is out to hit hard with Dragon Pulse and Air Slash. We do eventually fall, but Tidal Wing finishes off Rika's Ace with Dragon Rush. Next was Poppy, Master of Steel types. And thankfully Godzilla was able to sweep through the majority of her team with easy flamethrowers. Tinkerton is able to tank, but misses the Stone Edge, so we have a clean, easy sweep against the little girl. Oh, so Larry is also an Elite Four member. No wonder why you feel so underpaid. This time, Larry has flying types, but I have a few tricks up my sleeve. Godzilla is up first against Larry, and one flamethrower is just too short. It sets up Sunny Day, which works perfect for me, and a second flamethrower takes it down. Next was Staraptor, and I honestly don't know why I went for Hyper Beam, but I did. We just survive a Brave Bird, and Recoil Damage takes it down. However, once Oricorio is out, the recharge turn sacrifices our dragon. I then send out Tidal Wing, who tanks the Icing Wind and hits a hard fire punch followed by extreme speed to outspeed. His Altaria is next, and we sadly fall to Ice Beam. So I go for Baby Shark, who can hit hard with a critical outrage, as well as taking out his ace, Flamigo. This leaves Dragon Tamer versus Dragon Champion. So you know this one is personal. Fish is up first against Noivern and avoids a Super Fang, so we can freely set, followed by a quad effective Ice Fang. His Dragolage is next, and that also gets the same fate. A Haxorus just survives and slows us down with Rock Tomb, but we manage to take it down. Flapple swiftly KOs my Fish, but Jet comes out to return the sender with Dragon Claw, which leaves Hassle with only Bax Calibur. We deal major damage with Dragon Claw, but it does take us down and outspeeds Tidal Wing as well. So my biggest option is with Godzilla and Dragon Pulse wins us the match. But we still have one more trainer to battle, the top champion. Although it's pathetic how she's stuck on the roof like a cat. Fish does major damage with Crunch, but his priority Lumina Crush is too much for the poor fish, so we fall. Tidal Wing, however, comes out and prioritizes extreme speed, taking it out. Next was the loser, and we hit a couple of Thunder Punches before falling to Ice Fang. I then send out Jet, who can take it down with a Shadow Claw before Avalug gets revenge. Next was Godzilla, who again just falls short, tanks the Avalanche, and takes it out with another Flamethrower. When King Gambit is out, its attack is boosted with the amount of fallen allies on her team, and takes us out with a singular Stone Edge. So I send out Baby Shark to take it down with Earthquake. Switch to Iro when Go Goat is on the field and hit hard with Acrobatics. It uses bulk up surprisingly, so one more Acrobatics gets it to the reg. With only my Baby Shark left, I get the knockout with Earthquake and a couple more Earthquakes when Glamora terrestrializes, giving us the win. It's over. We've reclaimed our champion title and become one of the best trainers in Paldea. But we still have some work we need to do. God, I've never known a Dragon Tamer so stroppy before. We head back to the Academy where we discover the super boss of Team Star all along was the director of the very school. Now, wait a sec, this isn't right. My detective senses are tingling and the only way to get him to talk was to hyperbeam his face. Okay, I'm not the boss, but I think I know who it is. We have to wait until nightfall to meet up with the big boss. So we meet back up with Arvin by the lighthouse where I started this very run where he wants to test his skills to see if he's ready to venture into the Great Crater. Although Tidal Wing gets a quick and easy lead against Greedon when Dragon Rush flinches Chonky Squirrel and tackles it down with extreme speed. I then switch to Baby Shark to tank Stone Edge from Garganical. A bit of setting in Earthquakes later, we take it down. But Toad Squirrel outspeeds and takes us out with Power Whip. But Godzilla comes to retaliate and hits hard with Air Slash. We get poison from Sludge Bomb, but we manage to take the Toad out. Next is Cloyster, who gets annihilated by a Flamethrower. Even though we fall to poison damage, Jet comes out to play with Spicy Peppers and takes them out with ease, leaving only his Mabostiff. I then switch to Ira for more coverage, but I couldn't even outspeed and fall to play rough. I decide to send out Fish who can cut the attack and tank whilst also dealing major damage. Once we fall, one extreme speed from Tidal Wing later takes down another rival of ours. We need someone who battles like a champ. Excuse me? I'm a Kanto champion! Once Nightfall arrives, it's time to go against the Team Star Big Boss, Cassiopeia, otherwise known as Penny. 
She uses a team of evolutions, so this can go either way. I send out Tidal Wing, and after a little extreme speed, we're knocked by Dark Pulse. Dragon Rush really hits hard, but we're too short of taking it down, so one more extreme speed takes it out. Next was Vaporeon, who is easy to deal with a couple of Thunder Punches. When Jolteon is next, we get a free switch to Baby Shark, who is immune to Thunder, and one Earthquake swiftly takes down the Fox. Leafeon is next, and we start setting with a couple of Swords Dancers. We tangle Leaf Blades before we start sweeping against Leafeon and Flareon, leaving only her Sylveon. We're still fixed on Outrage, so we don't hit and fall to a Terra Moonblast. I send out Godzilla to tank the Fairy Staff, whilst also doing decent damage with Flamethrower. We do fall, but Fish can swiftly take it out with Waterfall. Look, kid, when I deal with evil masterminds, I take them out. But you're a kid, so just go to detention and you'll be good. All that's left is to see who is the better champion against Mona, my one true rival throughout the entire run of the game. Progressing through the region with her all comes down to this. She starts with her usual Lycan Rock, and I set with Swords Dance whilst the Stealth Rock gets set. I can then take it down easily with Earthquake, followed by Outrage on her Gudra, her Paw Mart is next, and her Ice Punch puts us on the brink of death, but we are able to take her down, as well as her Dunsparce. Her Orb Worm does take us down with Iron Tail, but Godzilla is able to quickly Oko the Goofy Worm, leaving only her Quack Gravel. After one big Hyper Beam, she does take us down with Aqua Step, but Fish comes out and a couple of crunches later finishes the duck off. With that said, we've just become the strongest trainer that Poldia has to offer. Although we still have one quest left to do for Arvin's sake, we need to head to Area Zero to help Arvin's dad with his work. But once we arrive, we find out that the Professor is no more, and all that remains is an AI wishing to put a stop to his time machine. This is the hardest fight in Pokemon Violet, so final guesses in the comments if you think we can beat it or not. Toro starts with Iomoth, and although we get flinched by a critical air slash, our Earthquake hits hard and takes the moth down. Next is Iron Bundle, a big risk for all of my team. But I send out Godzilla expecting Freeze Dry, but we get frozen in the process. Thankfully, we fall out instantly, and Flamethrower is also an Oko. Iron Thorns is next, and I decide to switch to Baby Shark once more and tank the Stone Edge. Earthquake takes it out, though another Earthquake on Iron Hands just falls short, so we fall to a Drain Punch. I go for Tidal Wing, so I can prioritize with Extreme Speed taking him down. Next is Iron Juggalus. Oh, I actually forgot about how we on. Regardless, one Thunder Punch takes down the Imposter, leaving his Ace and another threat to Dragons, Iron Valiant. I outspeed with extreme speed before falling to spirit break. Then I alter between jet and fish for intimidation. This eventually lets me safely take it down with a flamethrower from Godzilla. Toro is defeated and with that ladies and gentlemen, Lance has crushed through Pokemon Violet. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, ding on the notification bell of when I upload. And with that said, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!